beautiful people, this video is going to be an interview with a friend of mine, Paula, who's an amazing women's circle facilitator here in Nairobi, Kenya. And it's going to be a chat about what is a women's circle, why are women coming together, not only in Nairobi, Kenya, but all over the world, to tap into their femininity together. I have gained a lot of understanding about my life as a woman through these circles, being able to find my softer side, gain some understanding about my past and current relationships with men and women alike, be it partners, family, friends and the society at large. Um, I've also learned some beautiful practices and ceremonies that one can use to set some intention and invite certain things in their life. And I've also learned a lot about very practical knowledge about what it is to be a woman and make this, you know, a beautiful experience instead of what we often get told by the society. Being a woman is absolutely beautiful. And that's what I have started to find through these circles. So I hope you will enjoy this one. I've been accompanying women for three years now. When I came to Kenya, actually, I was working in a very different field. I was mm. working in an NGO. Ah, oh, okay. My background is from cooperation, social work. I was working in an NGO, but at some point I just decided there was so much going on. I was feeling like I was fighting all the time with the system, with the NGO, with mm. whatever. So there was something off. And I just took some time for myself. And in that time is when I start connecting with all this feminine wisdom, with uh, finding these amazing teachers that I have found on my way, that I start learning tools and um, experimenting with myself and self-knowledge and all these things. And then women start coming on my way. Uh, so I start sharing with them as well the tools. At some point they also start offering me to pay for that. So without even think about it, it just happened that now I totally live out of this, like mm. accompany women through groups, through individual sessions, women's circles, workshops, retreats, in just connecting with ourselves, with the feminine energy, with the body, with the womb. At the end is us who, who have all that wisdom within ourselves. So I accompany that for the women to, to get there, to reach and connect with that wisdom. That's beautiful, it's like so aligned. Let's go to the basics. What, how would you describe what is a women's circle? What, what is the purpose of it? What can happen in a women's mm. circle? Well, the first thing I have to say is that women's circle, you need to experience it. Words are not enough to describe what a women's circle means to me. Um, for me, it's a sacred space where women come together. I feel we have been living in this society that is a bit unbalanced. We have mm. been in this masculine, extreme and wounded side, always in the action, competition, criticism, you know, and that is translated into relationship between women, between women and men, between men and men. We have lost the feminine way of relating to each other mm -hmm. and to take care of each other and to construct societies and to live in, in society from a feminine side. So for me, a women's circle is a space where we can come back to remember all these things, mm -hmm. to relate from a more loving and compassionate way, without judgment, without expectations, just being able to be free to, to be yourself, to experiment, you know, and be yourself in that experimentation, whichever is gonna, whichever, whatever is gonna come out. And, um, also, it's a space to do that, for that, to explore, to explore things that we have forgotten. I don't think it's that we don't know them. I think we just need to remember. We need to remember our intuition. We need to remember our connection with our bodies, with our wombs, with mm. our heart. So this is a space where we can remember together because sometimes, you know, when you are on your own mm, world, on your own work, family, at the end, you enter in a loop and sometimes it's, dif it's difficult to realize things but when you come together with other women and then everyone starts sharing you start realizing like oh, yeah i go through that too 
yeah, I feel that way too, mm. or the opposite. No, I feel different and that's totally fine because also it's a space where we validate all feelings, all experiences is where we can validate ourselves with the support and the company of other women as well. And yeah, remember, remember ourselves. No matter what the discussion topic or the practices in women's circles have been, it's always been like a place to connect more to my feminine side. And that can then manifest through, you know, discussions, I don't know, tarot card readings, uh, drinking cacao, Mm. doing art, movement. What are your specialties? What do you always bring to your circles? Circles also can be conducted in many different ways. I normally like to propose things, but a circle also can be just a space to talk and to discuss. And, but I normally like to bring some proposals and co-create with someone else as well so that we invite to that experimentation. And um, normally what I like to bring is uh, breath work, movement and meditations. Um, sometimes I also use artwork, uh, art therapy. We can really move the energies stuck in our bodies. Um, all the repression that we have been living for so many years is a way of, you know, breaking um, the, the, all these molds and be able to really express and also explore it because, you know, all these years they have been telling us, oh, you need to sit like this, you, <laughs> your legs closed, please. Um, you know, always quiet in the last row of the class, you know, don't take the attention of anybody. And it's not about now I'm going to be the center of the attention, but it's now of I want to explore who I am and what is my expression through my voice, through my movement, through my breath. The breath also helps us to be present in our body and help us to move all those energies and emotions. Um, so for me, it's very powerful. You are very connected to many like conscious healers, facilitators, whatnot here in Nairobi. So tell me a little bit about the culture around not only women's circles, but maybe this more conscious way of living and what can maybe find in Nairobi. Mm. There is a lot of going on in Nairobi. It's quite different since I came here uh, seven years ago. Now you can find things every weekend, every day there are conscious events. There are amazing healers and practitioners that are doing any kind of thing you want to find, you can find it now in Nairobi. And it's growing, the community is growing little by little. We have like an, an umbrella that is supporting us a bit, which is Conscious Kenya. More and more uh, people are, are now offering their wisdom, their gifts, because I think we are in a very important moment where the awareness is raising. Mm. People are searching. We need something different that, than what we know already and we know the system as it is, it is is not working anymore. We need something else. And there, you know, we know there is something else within ourselves. So um, for me, the amazing thing about being so many healers and practitioners is that everyone has a different way of reaching there. So it's not about one technique is better than the other, but it's just about different paths because all of us, we are different. And all of us, we just need different ways to reach to within and, and to mm -hmm. the truth, no? That's why also I like to invite every time someone to the women's circle so mm -hmm. that we can keep knowing more and more and more because it's amazing what's going on here. And also the energy here in this land for me is so powerful. It's just the energy of Mother Earth, you know, mm. it's roots, deep roots. For me, it's where I found my roots, even though I'm Spanish, as you can notice in my accent. <laughs> um, here is where I found that sense of connection with Mother Earth, that mm. roots. And I really believe there is a um, transformation happening from here. Sometimes we can go a little bit maybe to the wrong paths when we explore mm. this equality and we, you know, it's not equality to try to become a man when you have your own power that you can tap into. Mm. And here in Kenya, I find more of that feminine power present. I've been introduced to so many interesting practices 
and I wouldn't even say that I'm like the most spiritual of people but I can always find something that speaks to me in whatever we do and I love that you know you said that everyone has their own way of, of exploring these things and they are these are such safe spaces mm. you always highlight that and emphasize that when we begin the circle and we have so many different people from so many different backgrounds we have people of every ethnicity from every continent we have uh, every religion you know no matter what your religious beliefs are people have felt comfortable in these circles also different professions even from very masculine positions like uh, like mechanics actually i'm i'm part of a book club now that started from one of your circles oh wonderful yeah and we've read books like mm. sex lives of african women it's been wonderful to discuss these topics and especially from people from different backgrounds do you know of any men's circles in nairobi they exist they are happening now they are coming out Men are also looking, are searching. It's just that we are ahead because we have been in the back for mm -hmm. some time. So it was our time to take the lead. But that doesn't mean we need to be now on top, but yeah. just holding hands and let's mm -hmm. go. No? I'm going to tell you a story of a book. Uh -huh. I, don't, I can't translate the name of that book in English. Okay. But this book talks about um, that when you start doing something in different parts of the world or in one part of the world but it's, stand, it's, it's expansive, it's um, going and repeating again and again and so many people are repeating it, it reaches a point, it reaches a number, a specific number that it becomes in the collective mm -hmm. consciousness and the same thing can start happening in China mm -hmm. even if it has not happened never before. Mm -hmm. So there is a book that talks about the women's circles. We should be doing these women's circles everywhere as much as we can so that at some point it will just happen by themselves. That means we are bringing back the feminine that has been lost for so many times and and it's not about women or men. Men also need the feminine energy because we have been all been living in the wounded masculine, not, e not even the masculine mm -hmm. energy. It is very wounded. Yeah, yeah, because the like healthy, healed masculine energy is beautiful. Exactly. So, so that's why now we need the feminine to go back to also help that masculine to heal, bringing that back that balance mm -hmm. that has lost. And uh, by that also, men are feeling it. Men are feeling something else because look at them. She, they are, you know, looking at the women. They are like, oh, they are so empowered now. They, feel, you know, they are seeing we are taking the lead. They don't want to be behind, and we cannot afford to leave them behind, because that has happened already before. Mm -hmm. So it's the time in where we really start balancing, forgetting about fights. But also these spaces are needed because we need a safe space where only women can talk, where only men can talk, so that at some point we can also come together and mm -hmm. talk. Because still there are so much things we need to heal with the other gender or sex, and we need these spaces so that we can feel safe to give a space to this energy to come out, and then we'll be able to also, you know, share and come together and the ability of yours to create these very safe spaces again i am from a society where you don't traditionally separate men and women we always do everything together but uh <laughs> you know you can go to uh, the most conscious event possible then you mix men and women to like uh uh, your sexual rock star workshop and uh, that's far from conscious and healed what happens in that type of let's say a festival situation there was this um hippie me too movement mm. when people from from these types of conscious events started sharing their experiences of how they've been you know abused even in these types of events even if our mind wants something that doesn't mean that our body is ready for that. Mm -hmm. So even if I want to be okay, balanced with men, whatever, whatever, but maybe there are some wounds still I need to heal mm -hmm. before I'm able to relate in a healthy way with this person again. Yeah, absolutely. So otherwise we'll just be forcing ourselves to do something just because I want to get rid of it, but 
not really heal from it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so also these things sometimes are a trend and we want to achieve things very quick but the feminine way also teaches us that we also need to go slow and everything has its rhythms and its times and its cycles and we need to respect our rhythm mm -hmm. our time even if other ones are already doing this kind of yeah it's okay but my rhythm maybe is different and it's yeah. just accept it so february is my health month when i'm focused on different health related goals and my two main focuses i believe we've touched these topics in in women's circles as well is to heal my nervous system get away from the fight or flight state and to be more in rest and digest as well as uh, learning more about how to live in accordance with my cycle and i could have easily chosen one of the health goals to be something like build a booty you know and uh, there's nothing wrong with that maybe i will later in this year but i really felt like you know what <laughs> before i focus on this very you know ching, 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 make it happen my results will be bigger and anything i do will be more effective if i just get in touch with my natural rhythm mm. and you know heal the basics first there is no need for me to start stressing myself with very high intensity activities right now mm. There is something that was happening many years ago that mm -hmm. was called the red tents or carpas rojas in Spanish. Mm. They were places where women were gathering and the eldest women were passing the wisdom and the information to the youngest mm -hmm. about their bodies, about menstruation, about sexuality, about fertility, conception, all these things that now are so taboo. They were just discussed in these spaces. The men, normally, they were the ones holding the safe space for them, like protecting the space so that they can gather and mm. pass on all this wisdom. They were um, also talking about the, the gifts and the power of the blood, of mm. our menstrual blood, that nowadays is like, mm -hmm. it's so powerful. These gatherings were happening like something normal. It was part of the society, part of the living with time of course these red rooms were eradicated because women were so powerful when you start trespassing all this information you are in control of your bodies and you know that in patriarchy one of the powers powerful things they did is to control our bodies of course that one had to be eradicated otherwise we'll know the power within ourselves so um, they stop happening now with time we are remembering back we are remembering so then they started the women's circles then they it start this movement called the red tents or carpas rojas and uh, yeah we are bringing back this you know bringing back this a space of mm -hmm. sharing knowledge of sharing wisdom of sharing all these things so that's why it's a remembering thing because it's nothing new it was there already there's so much ancient wisdom that we can tap into and uh, you know i i came from this very logical approach to things like let's go 10 years back and i would even be like nah, meditation what's that let me <laughs> so and now you know you can take as scientific and mm. uh, and you know go with a magnifier kind of approach you want and you will still find that these things are true you don't need to be like offering your menstrual blood uh, during full moon to the ground like it's not even necessary you can take it under a microscope and see that it can be used to heal some things it's and there are already studies about yes. that by the way yes but then we will be taught what needs to be taught mm. i guess many of us have seen like when we learn about the reproductive system we've seen the strong sperm who does all the work and uh, the womb is just waiting yeah <laughs> and of course the it's it's amazing what the what the sperm does but it's also amazing what happens you know, in, in our women's system to enable that, it's not one-sided. <laughs> That's empowerment when we start, you know, getting to the stage that these are taught to, to boys and girls alike. Yeah.
Mm. Ah, it feels like I'm part of a revolution here. <laughs> yes, of course we are. Yeah, we are. and it's it's a beautiful one, and it's it's not about fighting. It's soft, but mm. powerful. 